being taken from place to place and, and being sent to a whole new different city and a whole new different family and people that you've never met before. It's a really confusing experience. You just feel torn away from your community. It's like just imagine that you were going to work one day and it's just a normal day and you're on your way to work and everything is as it's supposed to be and you watered your dog and you drank your coffee and you tell your kids goodbye and you go to work and then the police show up at your job and they say, okay, we're moving you to a totally different city and you don't know anybody and you, you can't call your family and you can't call any of your friends and you need to leave your phone here and you can't take any of your stuff with you. We're gonna, we'll figure that out later and they just pick you up and they transport you to a totally different place and then tell you to just wait in this room for a little while because we're gonna figure things out and then they come and bring you a little sack lunch in and then it's oh just a few more hours and we're gonna figure this out just here play with this this little toy okay put this little ring on a hook and then they send you to these these really well-meaning people who, but you have no idea who they are and their house smells different and maybe they have a dog and they have hardwood floors, you've only ever had carpet, like everything about the experience is alien to you. And all you want is to be able to contact the people that you have a bond with. It's a very disrupting experience. And in a lot of ways, it's a traumatic experience because all of these things are unexpected and suddenly everything in your world that you felt was safe and secure and concrete is not. And having those ideas shattered is really difficult, especially as a child, because you need that security. You need to know that here's my bed, I can come home to it, and this is where it's gonna be, and that's gonna be okay. Or here's my mom, and no matter what, she's gonna be there for me, and I can just call her and she'll show up, and that's gonna be okay. When you can't believe that anymore, it starts to make you question, well, what can you believe? Who can you trust? What is a for sure thing? You begin to stop valuing certain things. You stop valuing relationships because they're not concrete and they're not gonna be there forever. And you stop investing yourself in certain things. And all of a sudden stability isn't really important to you. Having goals isn't important to you. You are concerned with where are you gonna sleep tonight? Are you gonna be safe? Who are these people? Doing a simple thing like taking a shower in a stranger's home is a very disconcerting experience. So the more that you get moved around, the more trauma that you endure in that. Every single move is a traumatic experience. So you can see the consequences later on. And really you can see the consequences pretty early on. As a child who's in foster care, I exhibited signs of not being able to trust other people, of not wanting to connect. I had some really antisocial behavior. I also had a deep dislike for government agencies, for the police, for social workers, like I did not believe that they were on my team because when I'm telling you that this is what I need and you're just not listening and you're saying, well, th this is what we feel you need, I can't trust you any longer. As a child, you do not have the capacity to forward think. It, it, you are not able to. And, and scientifically, your brain isn't even wired to do that yet. And so the decisions that you're making are pure emotional. When you're dealing with a traumatic situation and when the people around you don't have the tools to help you deal with that, the decisions that you're making are pure instinctive. And so I just know that if I have this incredible amount of sadness and this incredible amount of fear and I don't know what to do with it, well, well, maybe I should just run away. Maybe I should do drugs. Maybe I should get in fights. Maybe I should cuss out my foster parents. There's all kinds of different things that happen. None of those things were planned. All of those things were unintended consequences because I didn't know how to deal with the original emotions that I was facing. And so I really just want people to understand that these kids just need help. I don't understand how there's so much funding for foster care benefits, for adoption benefits, for emergency shelters. There's so much funding for that, but there's no funding for family preservation. And had my mom just had a little bit of help, had she have had enough money to buy her own vehicle, had she had had enough money to relocate herself from an abusive situation, had she not had to have depended on men in the first place for any kind of financial stability, I don't believe that she would have made some of the decisions that she would have made. I don't believe that she would have struggled as a mother because my mom is a good mom. She just had some hardships and she had nobody to help her. And so I don't understand how there's so much funding to take us away, but there's no funding to keep us there.